Uh, Christopher Cook is my name, uh, CEO of Carbiotics. Uh, I'm going to be presenting, obviously, in English today, uh, but you're welcome to ask uh, questions in Swedish afterwards. I'm fluent in Swedish as well. So, um, the purpose of today's presentation is to provide uh, an overview of the accomplishments uh, of our team in Lund, uh, who's doing a fantastic job. Uh, also, to to provide what I would say a compelling argument uh, why Carbiotics is an interesting investment both in the short term, given the developments or recent developments uh, with uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, as well as a long-term investment and, and the implications of the microbiome area as a central area in overall healthcare uh, as we transition towards more of a, a preventative healthcare system, which is obviously the, the ambition of Carbiotics as well, which is quite unique. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, we're a company that's, that we feel are pioneering this, this field of microbiome healthcare. And we're doing this in several ways. We're doing it through low-cost diagnostic testing of gut health. And then we're introducing modulators, uh, ways of manipulating or intervening gut health to improve it. But to understand what this means, <laughs> you have to understand what the microbiome is. And the term itself is quite new. 20 years ago, nobody heard about it. 10 years ago, companies started popping up in the area. And uh, our company became a product of that increased interest in the microbiome area. Although we come from uh, 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 Lund University Department of Biotechnology focused on, on uh, prebiotic, which is a unique angle in this particular space. So, uh, what is the microbiome? Uh, it's 100 trillion bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa that live on us and in, in us as well. Uh, we are not alone. We're walking around with these all the time, and they play an important function to uh, regulate our health and to ensure a, a certain level of homeostasis as well. Um, yeah, I see the, my presentation is a bit moved around, but that's okay. I think we can manage that. Uh, just in the GI system alone, there are about 30 trillion of these, so three times the number of human cells. And they play an important function in, in regulating a blood sugar, uh, cholesterol, maintaining a, 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 essentially a, a homeostasis, an intact uh, uh, gut wall or mucosa layer. And obviously, with the advent of the Western diet, uh, something has happened here. Uh, this particular layer has become uh, not necessarily porous, but permeable. And the natural function is, is that you, if you consume a lot of fruits, vegetables, grains, and seeds, you're promoting the growth of certain short-chain fatty acids, and they're ensuring or helping to promote uh, an intact gut lining. But if you consume too many meats, red meats, uh, fats, sugar, you're promoting the growth of uh, less desirable species who produce toxic metabolites, so ammonia, amines, phenols, that cause inflammation, leakage, and these toxic metabolites enter the bloodstream, cause inflammation. And that's actually a positive feedback loop. So once you, that process starts, it feeds back, back on itself, creating less anaerobic conditions, promoting the growth of these less desirable bacteria, and the process accelerates. Why is this relevant? Well, there's a lot of information supporting that there's a strong correlation between this this uh, occurrence and an increased risk of developing different chronic and metabolic conditions so over the long term. But more relevant now is that we know that 70% of our immune system sits in our gastrointestinal system, so our gut. Why is that relevant? Obviously, we have a vested interest in, in ensuring that we have a strong immune integrity, each of us. And therefore, you could argue that gut health is a key proxy to immune system integrity as a key takeaway from this presentation today. And thus, everyone should have a vested interest in this. And I think given the, the existing pandemic crisis, if you want to call it, I think once the dust settles, and obviously there are going to be many unfortunate deaths because of this, there'll be a, 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 a reflection about this about the vulnerabilities of everything from market economies and globalization to the vulnerabilities of our healthcare system in terms of providing proper diagnostics, and the vulnerabilities of each individual in terms of each person's 
immune system and its integrity as well, and what could be done to ensure and strengthen that. So there'll be a, a lot of reflection after this period, if I want to call it that. So, uh, according to what I've said, the, the solution would be quite simple then, right? You just eat more fruits, vegetables, grains, seeds, polyphenols, you exercise more, you fast intermittently, cleaning out the toxins, you stimulate these key short-chain fatty acids, and you reduce certain things such as red meat and sugar. Yeah, if everyone did this, we would all be much more healthy, definitely. But it's not that simple. And it's not that simple simply because we are all different. Our microbiomes are all different as well. And their microbiomes are fundamentally changing the older we get and as we enter disease state. And essentially on a daily basis, depending upon what we're eating, the level of stress, if we're taking medicine and other lifestyle choices. So this makes it much more difficult to address the issue. I wanted to test this thesis. And the best way to show my commitment as a CEO and potentially be one of these golden eggs, as Yaron said, um, is to validate this concept of, of what we consider natural variability, this change in the microbiome, but also to see whether I could reverse this trend. This is typically a Western trend, by the way, although there are some individuals who exhibit uh, quite a good level of diversity in terms of uh, probiotic species. This is a general trend. So what I did, not over eight weeks or 16 weeks, which are typical study lengths, over 104 weeks, two years, I measured my gut health, utilizing an index that we created focused on several key biomarkers of gut health, uh, representing roughly 30 probiotic species. And then I took what we consider the most effective probiotic on the market. In this case, it was an Arabino Galactan, approved at the market, uh, most similar to the product that we're developing. And I increased the dosing to a level four times the recommended daily intake to see if I could induce a change. And these are the results of this, of this index. And obviously, it demonstrates that my starting point was not optimal, but I'm no different from anybody else. I didn't suffer from any gastrointestinal issues. I went through a, a normal adolescent and days in college. Uh, you know, I got married, and you know, today I enjoy a glass of wine on the weekends. Uh, I went through my, my uh, midlife crisis, and I'm sitting here today. So this is a normal starting point. I'm not a unique person by any means. Um, and I think that what this represents is the fact that this is highly variable. So if I were to select one of these points as a, as a data point to generate recommendations in terms of what I should be doing or eating, then it could be erroneous. So, but it's also demonstrating to me that the, the current generation of the best prebiotics are not efficacious. So that was sort of the starting point or the impetus to why we decided to develop a very cost-effective test to facilitate for better information collection at, at each sample point and over time and to develop a new generation of modulators. There's one more problem. How do you measure gut health? There's no accepted definition of gut health. So the solution is, everyone becomes their own definition. When you start measuring your gut health, that becomes the reference point. So these key bacteria species, metabolites, whether you produce them and uptake them, and in relation to certain biometrics. It could be immune system biometrics, such as immunoglobulin, or blood sugar or cholesterol. That becomes the tool to measure your trajectory of, of improving or poor gut health. Further reinforcing the need for reliable measurement, given that there are lag times between these human biomarkers and changes in the gut microbiota. So what have we accomplished? And again, I'm extremely proud of this. Uh, we listed the company in October, 
And since then, we've definitely surpassed uh, what we promised the market and even gone into uh, new markets, new billion euro markets that we hadn't communicated earlier. Um, further improving our strategy to market for our therapeutics as well. So what have we done? We made obsolete the single sample gut health test, which is essentially the current paradigm. You take one sample, but from a scientific perspective, it's totally illogical to do that. On the analytical side, you do things in triplicate. So why wouldn't you sample in triplicate as well? Especially when you're dealing with this natural variability I, I, uh, I uh, alluded to earlier. And then we open this for everyone to use. Yeah, it's proprietary, but we formed a business model which we allow all companies to access this. And secondly, what we're doing is we're bringing to market the first effective portfolio that can be personalized. Personalization of a therapeutic is difficult, but the microbiome itself forces you to personalize simply because of this natural variability. So a lot of companies operating in this space may reach certain endpoints in their, in their clinical studies, but when their products enter the real world, those efficacies will be difficult to, to reach simply because of the natural variability of the gut microbiome. So personalization becomes a, a fundamental requirement for success in this space. So what do we do? This is an overview of what we offer today. And a lot of this, actually two of these points are new from last week. We came out with two press releases last week in connection with our prebiotic and our medical food, and I'll go into those in more detail. But essentially we're offering gut health testing services, so diagnostics, and then interventions. And in terms of interventions, we're on the ingredient side, the medical food side, and the therapeutic side. And I'll explain a bit later why it's relevant, all these different, uh, uh, both the diagnostics and the, and the therapeutics and the link between them as well. The gut health testing services, uh, we upgraded our first gen platform. I showed you the results of that, the two years of longitudinal data to a 16S platform. And the innovation here is that we're offering this at one third the cost, not in Sweden, globally. This is a huge innovation in the space. We could have chosen to drop the price on the single sample, but instead we took the lowest reference price in the market, which is actually a non-profit. And then we said, we'll, we'll meet that price or match it, and we'll offer our service in triplicate. What does this do to the competition? We're all vested in ecosystems of single samples in an 800 million euro market. And then open this up to partners where we don't have to spend any money on customer acquisition. And I'll explain what that means in a second. So how do we get this to market? Well, we have three different services. Uh, one gut is the basic platform, and it's a direct-to-consumer platform, and it's for 99 euros. Again, triplicate, 99 euros, lowest cost on the market globally in an 800 million euro market. Uh, LinkGut is our white label service where we say any food and beverage producer, nutraceutical company, health and wellness app, dietitian, medical professional can access this as their own microbiome service. We set it up for free. They earn a 10% commission. They market the service. Nobody sees us. It's their service, and we provide the service for them. Innovative, extremely innovative. And then study gut. So why don't we leverage these cost advantages and provide them to all clinical applications? And our advantage is on the, on the, on the, the multi-sample testing. That's where we get economies of scale. And that's the largest of the markets, actually, on the clinical side. We came out with a press release last week. We had promised the market that we would launch a prebiotic ingredient in 2023. We came with news last week that we're launching it two years earlier. <laughs> two years earlier. Well, we're targeting the launch in 2021 of this prebiotic. The market for prebiotics globally is, is a 5 billion euro market. 
But I equate the, the, this market size also to the market for probiotics, because you're intervening, you're modulating the gut microbiome, which is a 50 billion euro market. Our product is up to 10 times more effective than at market products, so inulin and phosphine gauze, at a cost level the same as those first generation products. So a product up to 10 times better at a, at a similar cost level. And this is something that we're rapidly bringing to market and we'll bring to, to market in the United States first and we'll have manufacturing in the United States as well. This is where we've spent 10 years of R&D in the company. This was the start of the company. We came from this area. We started an external joint venture company. We brought the IP back into the company. We built up contacts and knowledge about process optimization. And then we recently finished key enzyme development work, which is critical to reaching cost advantages for the production of this particular ingredient. We launched or informed the market that we'll be launching a medical food as well. We never informed the market of this as an intermediate stage between the ingredient and the therapeutic. And a medical food is regulated through the FDA and EFSA, in the case of Europe. And it's a prescribed product, high margin prescribed product, administered by a medical professional. And in this case, we can personalize the product. So here we overcome the problem of personalizing a therapeutic by having a medical food product in a very large market as well, a 15 billion euro market. And what's interesting about this product, now we have a tool that we can work with the other pharmaceutical companies with. Every single pharmaceutical company developing a pro-drug should be very interested in the pharmacokinetics of that drug and leveling the playing field both during clinical studies and during the administration of that particular therapeutic. What do we do? We have a way of normalizing the gut through this particular product. So as a partner for therapeutics development on the pro-drug side, we are extremely suitable for that as well, and we're open to that as well. Leverage the platform we have, leverage the information we're developing, leverage these efficacious medical foods. Uh, on the therapeutic side, uh, what we're doing there is creating unique symbiotic formulations. I'm not going to disclose how we do that, but they contain both probiotics and prebiotics um, in a way that doesn't inhibit commensal growth, in a way that doesn't inhibit the growth of your own probiotic bacteria and actually uh, uh, induces the growth of these key species producing key metabolites. That's the purpose here. And with the advent of our uh, medical foods, what have we done? We've created a way to accelerate the development of our therapeutics, identify key species that are absent in people suffering within those indication areas. So we lower the risk now of our therapeutics. So essentially we're developing a medical food for each indication area we're targeting on the therapeutic side. And what we've declared already is we're looking at hyperaminemia and, and UC, so an IBD. So elevated pH in the blood and a gastrointestinal disease. These are the two areas we've, we've uh, flagged or informed the market. We have also informed the market that we are um, looking into neuroinflammation, and that's an area we'll be exploring as well. So what makes us different? And I, this is probably... <laughs> the second most important slide <laughs> of all my slides. And what I try to do here is distill what makes us unique in the market. Why are we gonna succeed in comparison to the other companies? And my firm belief is that we're going to succeed because we're doing what should be done. We're respecting the natural variability. We're developing products in, a, in the most efficient way. And we're respecting what I think are the limitations of the microbiome as well, as well as its 
its co potential contributions. So the current approach, and when I say old approach, this is the current paradigm. This is what people are doing today. Species diversity, the more species you have, the better it is. This is the whole thesis behind why we eat probiotics, right? We hope that it has a benefit on the production of these short chain fatty acids. Whereas our belief is you target surgically this metabolic process to produce these short chain fatty acids, butyric acid, and ensure that they're taken up by the body. And then you develop customized analytical procedures to facilitate that. Single sample testing, as I alluded to, to multi sample testing, I don't need to explain that. <laughs> you cannot argue scientifically that a single sample is better than a multi sample. And we offer three samples and six samples. And when you get to the six sample offering we have, the price per sample goes down to one fifth the cost of the nearest competitor at market. Single point sampling compared to multi or longitudinal sample, multi sample longitudinal sampling. If you, as I said earlier, the only way to really figure out or solve or address gut health is a trial and error process for each individual. Therefore, you have to measure continually. You have to shorten that feedback loop. And we're doing that through our own testing and working through partners having indirect tests of what's happening uh, in the gut microbiome. This is something we believe the whole industry is geared towards generic intervention where you carry out a clinical study, you reach certain endpoints, efficacies, you make claims, you put them on the package, and you hope that they're efficacious during use. If you create short feedback loops on the, on the diagnostic side, you flip that on its head. You create personalized intervention, personalized efficacy. A person can judge whether an intervention is efficacious for them. And if it's a, a placebo, <laughs> or it doesn't have any effect at all, then they're no longer going to be using that product. So it's validation of efficacy for the individual. This is the root of the essence of personalized uh, healthcare. For some reason, people believe that we're a company focused on exclusively gut health issues, so IBD. And as I said earlier, the microbiome has an impact on many disease areas. Everything from gastrointestinal diseases to metabolic diseases. Uh, the elevation of butyric acid impacts neutrophil activity, which is a hallmark of degenerative neurodiseases as well. Even different forms of cancer, you have a, a, a neoplastic impact from a depressed level of butyric acid. And then the fact that Today, there's a microbiome focus. There's a people are seduced by the technology. They believe that they can use just the microbiome results and derive massive conclusions, whereas our belief is that the microbiome is one biometric in a universe of other biometrics. And a medical professional should use that information, look at other biomarkers, judge what's required for an individual in terms of changing diet, changing lifestyle. So exclusively using microbiome information is fundamentally flawed. So, this is my last slide. I said the previous one was the second most important. This is the most important slide. This is, again, a summary. And with this summary, um, let me just recap what we're doing. On the, on the testing side, one-third the cost of the nearest competitor, one-fifth the cost if you take the six-sample test. We offer this to uh, any food and beverage, nutraceutical company, medical professional at no cost. And we also offer it as a, as a clinical analytical service. Uh, on the prebiotic side, two years earlier than we communicated, we're bringing this prebiotic to market in a substantial market. And we're introducing the medical food as well at the same point next year that can be personalized. What is the relevance here? Uh, we know that Anybody who comes in as a partner can also be a customer on the ingredient side. If you're selling a, 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 a GI or gut-related product, of course you may be interested in utilizing our prebiotic to fortify. Same thing on the medical food side. We're leveraging our diagnostic tests to personalize. So now you start seeing a link between the diagnostics and the modulators. 
And the same thing applies between the medical food and the therapeutics. Because we can personalize the medical food, we can quickly identify what's absent in terms of key probiotic species and accelerate the development of therapeutics as well. So we lower the risk. So not only can we, with a medical food, be much more ambitious in terms of targeting multiple indication areas beyond what we've communicated already, we can also utilize that to accelerate the development and introduction of therapeutics in those same indication areas. And then we can partner with drug companies to address the pharmacokinetic issues I mentioned earlier to improve the potential efficacies of their products. So hopefully I've been successful uh, from an investor standpoint in terms of communicating the short-term potential of the company, especially in light of the COVID-19 crisis and the long-term potential of the company. And uh, again, uh, I thank you for your time, and I certainly welcome any questions, both in, in English and Swedish. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher. Maybe we should... We, we only have uh, uh, time for, for one question, so I think maybe we should ask the audience if you have hmm? any question. There's a question here. Yeah, uh, I, I just need to, to, to raise the question. Absolutely. Is yeah. it similar to BioGaia? Uh, BioGaia nämnde tidigare faktiskt som ett, ett guldägg, om man kan säga. Och uh, uh, ett bolag som fokuserar på probiotika. Och probiotika är självklart bakterier som man introducerar för att förstärka tandfloran, för att modulera pH i tandfloran också. Men Eh, vad vi sysslar med för det mesta är prebiotika, mat för dessa bakterier som finns redan i tarmfloran. Och det är det som är skillnaden, huvudsakligen. Och sen har vi den här diagnostiktest. Så BOG till exempel skulle kunna teoretiskt, om de har ett intresse, använda vårt bolag som en diagnostiktjänst för att validera om deras produkter har en effekt i varje människa. När jag säger effekt, det är inte bara att modulera en pH, minska inflammation, men också ha en effekt på att hjälpa till dessa nyckelbakterier att växa och producera smörsyra och så vidare. Så att eh, vi kan definitivt ha ett partnerskap med ett bolag som BOG. Men i grunden, vi använder probiotika i våra terapeutiska produkter. Men vi är extremt känsliga mot att stimulera den här eh, metabolisk process för att stimulera tillväxt av de här eh, nyckelbakterierna och inte introducera bakterier bara för att introducera dessa bakterier. Så det finns en, en skillnad också. Som jag nämnde tidigare, industrin för probiotika är en 50 miljarder dollars industri. Industrin för prebiotika är en 5 miljarder euro industri. Och vi inser att om man kan lyckas att ta fram en prebiotisk produkt, validera effekten. Det finns ingen förklaring varför man skulle inte kunna uppnå samma marknadsstorlek. För i slutändan handlar det om, kan man skapa en effekt hos varje person? Kan man modulera och skapa en förändring i tarmhälsan och med de här andra biometrics eller biomarkers som jag nämnde tidigare? Okej, okay. tack. Ja, ja. <laughs> tack. Ehm, tack så jättemycket för presentationen. Ja, ja, du kanske är kvar en stund där ute också. Ja, så. Ja, perfekt.